our founder of the Sisters of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary. He told the sisters, you do what others don't want to do, and you go to places where no one wants to go. In the 80s, the HIV pandemic broke out. No one wanted to touch an HIV patient. No one wanted to go even in the house of an HIV patient. There were more people with fully-fledged AIDS who were dying on their own. Very few were coming to the hospital dying. So that's how this program started. We come out of the hospital and answer to the distressed homes. The younger generation are the ones who actually contract it. So when they die, they, there is a gap in the family structure. And most of the children are left with one parents. We have ended up having child-headed homes because both parents die. It has affected family structures. We have a lot of orphans and vulnerable children. We support them with education, school fees, and also nutrition. The tools we give the children prepare them for the future. Grandparents haven't got long to live and the children are left on their own. So there is a big need for primary education. Most of them, it's one meal a day. That has a great effect on the performance also of children. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. For a child to grow well, we have seen that it's very important. They eat at least three times. If they have an uh, empty stomach, they were dozing and the performance wasn't all that good. But now, looking at their performance, they really do well in school. We sensitize communities on early identification of children with disabilities because there is a lot of stigma attached to children with special needs. Most of them were locked in the houses and they were being called names and the parents were shy to take them out. Oh, this is nice. Where are they? When the communities or the parents themselves see that a child can be accepted by a stranger, then it was easy for them to actually start bringing them out. We try to empower the people from where they are. We encourage them to do skills. We have one young man, he learned tailoring, and now he's making a living out of that. And then people have seen that these people can do something. We don't just have to keep them at home. When someone gets HIV, we accompany them during that time when they are really sick, providing medication, psychosocial counseling, and nutrition supplement. We encourage people to form communities, and we have also formed support groups. Some of the churches would actually tell people to stop taking medication. You know, they will pray over them and say, you are healed. So then people die, of course, if they don't take medication. We go in churches, schools, marketplaces, the prisons, sensitizing people on prevention. 
The entry point to all the activities is information, education and communication. When they recover, we provide the clients or the beneficiaries with training on business management, entrepreneurship. We will empower them with what they are good at. Once they have enough income, they've started actually now looking after their children, paying a bit of school fees, and they improve the number of meals they're having at home, then we win them off. When you see someone's life being transformed, they just feel so happy and so proud. We give them a small push, they just flourish.